Aloha. The post you'll be doing this week is going to prepare you for what will probably be the hardest paper you'll be doing in this class. It's your research two and three paper where you'll be taking two of your resources from that original bibliography or new resources that have come up since then. And you'll be putting them in a dialogue under a specific theme. And they should be um, sources that are oppositional or that help you form sort of a rebuttal about your issue. So this week we'll be looking at uh, Martin Luther King's dream speech and George Wallace's inaugural speech. And this is sort of a practice post um, it's something we're going to do as a class together um, under the same format as your resource two and three. So you're going to look at uh, each of these speeches and you should watch the speech. You should um, click on the link that has the words for the speech and follow along. Um, you may not need them for the King speech, but you'll definitely need the words for the Wallace speech. Uh, it's, it's very hard to hear that speech and kind of hard to understand him as well. Um, so make sure you open those up. But even for the King speech, it would be good for you to have and take some notes because you'll need to incorporate, incorporate at least one quote in your post. You should also be incorporating quotes into your papers, um, just as you did in resource one. It's always important to have the, the author's actual words um, to give them a sense of authority in your paper. Um, but also make sure you're using them in context. And um, uh, most people in the English department say that when you use a quote, you should never use it at the beginning or the end of a paragraph because you're supposed to explain the quote. Um, coming from more of a journalist background, uh, I oftentimes use quotes, you know, at the beginning and end of paragraphs uh, to, to put them as in a place of authority. I wanted the, the, the person I'm interviewing or the person I'm writing about, such as Martin Luther King, to have sort of an authority in my paper. But you want to make sure you're explaining, you know, your, people know why you're using that quote and you're not using it out of context. So that's that's what's important to me. Um, so anyways, that's what you're going to be doing this week. So I first started using this uh, assignment about five or six years ago. And when I brought uh, George Wallace's speech into the classroom, uh, these types of ideologies about segre segregation were just sort of a thing of the past. If people did think, still think this way, they never really voiced it. It was something they were a little bit ashamed of. Um, but in our, in the last, you know, four or five years, since I started teaching English 100 and using this assignment, these ideologies have definitely resurrected themselves such that um, at one point I considered not using this assignment, especially in the after the events in Virginia, which left um, a young lady killed, because uh, I didn't want it, you know, things to escalate in the classroom over these opinions. Uh, but then I decided, you know, it's worth worth the risk because um, the speech uh, that George Wallace's speech is oftentimes called segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever, because he, he says this in the speech. Uh, however, when I used that title once in a class, a student spoke out and he said, but that's not the title of the speech. This is his inaugural speech, his inaugural address when George Wallace got nominated governor. And the student was really right. Um, I shouldn't have uh, listed it as such. I shouldn't have, you know, called it by that name because I'm already injecting 
my opinion or bias, even if it's uh, the, the opinion or bias of the general public, I should re reference it as his inaugural address. Um, so this student was right. The student also said that while he did not agree with Wallace's view on race or segregation, uh, he did view with some of his ideology or at least some of the things he had to say. So um, this, this is not really something I would have expected anyone to say five years ago, but if that is your opinion, great. Um, give us your credible sources to back that up. Um, use quotes, um, you know, form an argument. You should, in all your classes, you should feel free to um, generate your own arguments, uh, support your own opinions, and um, and you'll you'll get a perfect score. Uh, I have to be upfront though and say I think that these um, the ideology and the underlying views that Wallace um, bases his opinions about race and segregation are always going to lead back to race and segregation or class or caste even. So that would be my argument. And um, if you're like me, you're, you're actually gonna have a hard time watching the, the Wallace speech. Uh, it, but I, I encourage you to watch it. I encourage you, you know, at least watch enough to form the post for your paper. And, um, you know, if, if you do feel like, you know, you agree with some of those views, I, I hope it will challenge you a little um, to see where they come from in, in our history. So my student though, who disagrees with me, um, he actually generated some great original content and analysis by looking at the title of George Wallace's speech. Um, and that's exactly what I want for you guys in a paper. You could write your post about that. Um, so um, so that's, that's actually what we're looking for. That's what I mean when I say um, original content. It means that you're looking at a source and some context and you're generating your own opinions and analysis from that. It could just be thinking it could be actual experience and that's what makes for such a great paper so if you were doing your paper on let's say something like global warming you would uh you wouldn't want to use older sources sources necessarily uh i mean if you're trying to say you know this this research disagrees with the other research and it you know, one was made in 2000 and the other was, you know, yesterday, that's not gonna be a good counter source unless it's the own author's work or something like that. Cause you could say, this is where this person stood back then and this is where they stood now. So you could make the case that um, that's why this author is a good scientist or that's why this is a not so credible scientist or why the whole thing is not credible because the science said it was gonna, the world was gonna end by today and it didn't, right? Or something like that. But you know, so the sources you use are gonna be different. If you're doing something more in the social sciences, you can use older sources, you know, as a way to, you know, put it in historical context. And historical context will be really important for this post for anything you're writing about, right? So um, if you're gonna write about an event or if you're gonna write about something going on, make sure you have the context behind what's happening. So for these two speeches, it's especially important. And um, we're gonna look at a timeline here. Uh, keep in mind that uh, King's speech is written within about six months of George Wallace's speech, but he, he directly references Wallace in the speech. 
So uh, here we have uh, in the middle of the king's speech, um, he says, I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with this vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. So um, he's, ref he's referencing Wallace. And I think a lot of the things he uses in his speech are also a response to Wallace. Um, so the context of Wallace is he's, he, he is pro-segregationist. He's actually going to schools that they're integrating and he's going to the door of the school and trying to stop the integration. What does he say? What's the reason? It's the feds. The feds shouldn't be telling us what to do in Alabama. So this is very much an, an argument that is, you know, central to a lot of what's going on right now. Um, like I say, five, six years ago, nobody would have Nobody would have been comfortable having that argument, but it's very much at the forefront again. So you should think about that as, you, as you're watching these speeches. Um, here's another quote from uh, King. I have a dream that one day even, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. So, um, so you're gonna pick a theme. So I'll just show you um, this theme here. So if, if you were gonna, I've suggested a few different themes that you can use. You can find a different one that you might think is a better theme or one that you're more interested in. But uh, here's one with freedom. So I said that King, for King, freedom is integra integration and prosperity and security. Um, integration into prosperity and security. Whereas for Wallace, freedom is in segregation because it's freedom from the federal, federal government. Um, for him, freedom is not from government. It comes from, our, from rolling up our sleeves, uh, hard work, freedom comes from not having fear or by our or by maintaining our security. So what, what Wallace is saying is that if we integrate, that's taking away our, the, the Anglo-Saxon um, freedom because it's taking away our security. It's taking away um, freedom from the states to make their own decisions. Um, other other um, themes? Our, our brotherhood. So you have King talking about the marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community that must not lead us all to distrust white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied up in our destiny. So you might say that for King, brotherhood is is everybody. Um, for Wallace, what is brotherhood? The forebears, the great Anglo-Saxon, the great Anglo-Saxon Southland, blood in us, okay? Blood and soil, that's what we heard in Virginia, blood in us. It's, it's rooted in our history. Greatest people on earth, call of all Southerners centralization and king's type of unity is labeled mongrel so again this is a response king is in a way responding to wallace um so what is brotherhood for wallace it's the anglo-saxon what is an anglo-saxon okay let's go to wikipedia first i want to talk about using Wiki wikipedia in your papers and what I want to say is don't. <laughs> um, you should never cite Wikipedia as a source. 
what you can do is you can go to the bottom of Wikipedia and see where they're getting all their information. Uh, you'll see all those citations there. And then you go to that source or you just quote that source from Wikipedia, but you should actually go to the source. Sometimes they'll um, actually quote and they'll cite the source right there in, in Wikipedia. Um, so what, the, what it tells us here, and you can't always trust Wikipedia. Uh, it's sort of like a public, you know, public contribution. So it's not always accurate. That's why you should refer to the sources they are um, using. And then you have to consider if they're actual credible sources too. So, um, so, you know, it's always good to start at Wikipedia. So if you go to the dictionary, sometimes it'll say Anglo-Saxon is like a Germanic uh, ethnic group. Here it says that um, it's sort of, it, it started as a Germanic tribes who migrated to continental Europe and then became, and then uh, like Brit British groups and English groups sort of, you know, came together to develop this culture. So it's an Anglo-Saxon Saxon culture. And um, so, so that's what Wallace is saying. Um, is it a good argument? Um, <laughs> I'll give you my argument, and this would be my original content if I was going to post on this, or actually if I was going to write a paper. Um, Anglo-Saxon or even a white, being white, uh, white nationalism is, it's, it's nothing. That's what it is. It's nothing. Nobody is white. That, that's not what people are. So people like me, I do not know what I am. I don't have my, um, you know, my, my parents, when I asked them, what, what am I? What ethnic group am I? They said, I don't know. I've since figured out some things, but I haven't been able to figure out much. But you know, I'm not white. I, I'm either Irish or I'm French or I'm Italian or I'm something. But those are all different cultures. They all have their own cultures. They're all indigenous to some land from somewhere. So this is an identity, whether it be Anglo-Saxon or Dixieland or white, uh, it, it, it's really just an identity that is established with difference. We're not them. We're not pe those people of color. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, it, it's people who don't have their identity. Um, so we, we want to think about that when we think about something like segregation and race. Um, so, so, you know, the more we know about who we are, the less we have this type of race that identifies ourselves by how we're different instead of what our actual ancestries and histories and lands may be. So anyways, if I was going to write a paper, that would be, be my original content based on these quotes, based on these source, sources, which are very credible because they come right from the people. Um, now, these aren't like you know, a scholarly source. This is a persuasive argument. So you can use these types of sources in your paper too. And then use scholarly arguments are, you know, to talk about something like Anglo-Saxonism. Okay, so one more here is chains. So for King, um, chains represent dis discrimination and segregation. This, the chains of segregation, which of course, refers back to slavery. Whereas Wallace, chains are the tyranny that clanks its chains on the South. What is that? What's the tyranny? Again, it's the, the federal government. The, the federal government that is forcing integration on us is like chains. So you can see how if you're going to write uh, your post on this, you would say, King says this, Wallace says this, the reason King says it is because of this, 
The reason Wallace says it because it is because of that. And then give your perspective. So it may be something based on a personal experience. It may just be something you've studied, but that's the original content. So that's what we're looking for. And I want you to do it first in this post as a practice. And then this is what you're gonna do for your resource two and three paper. So you're not gonna do well in the two and three paper if you do something like you tell this one source, you summarize their argument, and then you, you, then you have your other source and you summarize their argument. That's not gonna work. You're gonna have to find something similar enough between their arguments that you can say, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said that, this is what I think, this person, maybe this per person, person isn't a very credible source. Uh, maybe something's wrong with their science. Maybe it's old. Um, but that's what's going to give you your, um, generate your, your original content, your original analysis. So other things that are important are um, symbols. What symbols and um, references do they have in their speeches? So timing, right? So that's the Kairos. Um, King, he's standing there um, in front of the Lincoln statue. Uh, it's a hundred years exactly since the Emancipation Proclamation. And he's like, you guys, we got this check with insufficient funds, right? So these are all symbols. This is something you could write about in your post. Um, it's a different theme, but that's something that you could write about. So King also uses literature. Um, he uses a lot of biblical references or literature. For example, Amos 5, I believe it's about the 24th verse. Let justice roll down like waters, righteousness like a mighty stream. That's the, the great prophets of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. Um, he also uses Isaiah 40. Uh, so the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Also, um, John the Baptist uses this. So this is sort of using this uh, Bible uh, context and scripture to show that you know God is with them God will come and bring justice um, and also uh, like my country tis of thee so just like I went and looked up the word Anglo-Saxon Anglo you could go look up those scriptures you could look up my country tis of thee and use that as a way to create some original context, uh, some analysis to see why is he using these specific scriptures? What's the basis? Or why is he using my country, country to the view? What does that, how does that factor into American belief for life? And, and why is it important to his speech, his message? How is it part of his persuasive message? Um, so I'm going to give you a timeline here, and then I'm going to show the clips. In 1963, you have a uh, Wallace nominated government. Then you have the, the dream speech in like August, about six months later. And then in November, a couple months after that, that's when John F. Kennedy is actually assassinated. Um, what's going on? You have in 1955, this is, this is leading up to this, you know, you've already had the, the bus boycotts, uh, Rosa Parks, you know, uh, the four church bombings, uh, King's house being bombed. You've got the sit-ins, you've got the Supreme Court rules for travel and integration. You have the Freedom Riders. Um, and then in 1962 is when the Supreme Court orders the University uh, of Mississippi 
to enroll the first African-American student. So that's the tensions that are rising here. And, um, you know, I don't see you guys in a class, but most of my classes are, you know, people of all different uh, races and backgrounds. And, you know, it's so beautiful. And just to think that, you know, my, my own parents did not go to integrated schools. It's not that far back. Uh, my, my family is from the South. So this is really very personal to me. Uh, my dad is from Mississippi. My mom's from Kentucky. And I lived in uh, Tennessee until I was eight years old. Okay, so let's revisit this idea about Wallace's argument. Is he making a good argument? I think the first thing we have to ask is, what argument is he trying to make? And from the, the slides that I've shown you, it seems that he's making this argument that it's not, we're, we're not really against segregation, we're against the feds coming in and telling us what to do. But that's not really an adequate argument in the frameworks that he's using because he's chanting segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. If we integrate, your security is threatened. If we integrate, your education is threatened. So he's not really suggesting that they're open to integration. And so it seems that the state's rights are a deflection from the real argument. And this is very similar to some of the, some of the arguments we see and some of the rhetoric we see today. Um, but let's say he was making that argument. And this is very much a, still an argument that I can hear from some of my family in the South. That's why this, this is a person to me. They'll say, you know, they should have just left us alone. The, the South would have come around and we would have eventually integrated on our own time. Um, so it is that if, even if, Wallace was making that argument that the, the state should be able to decide on something like integration. H how does that work out when the people that want to integrate are the minority? They're never going to be able to vote. Even, and at that time, voting was, there was a lot of voter suppression. Um, and um, are they ever going to be able to be integrated because they don't have the numbers in the vote. And what makes us a country it, at all? I mean, do we have to agree on some things? So it's how, you know, how does this work out? So this is the type of argument I've given you a couple different arguments now. So you'll need to choose one for your post then, but then also think deeply about these things when you are doing your own paper, what argument are they really making? Um, you're gonna need to find sources that you can put in conversation. What themes can you find in your own argument? A lot of you guys are using sources that are fairly broad. So when you go to put the sources in conversation, if you can't find a theme that is relevant to the three sources, then you need to find uh, different sources that focus on your topic more narrowly. So think about that and think about argument and go for it. This is gonna be, the next three weeks is gonna be pretty tough. You know, you're gonna have a lot more daily posts. You've got, you know, these hard assignments but then we'll start to simmer down. Hang in there and um, I'm looking forward to your papers and your posts. Okay.